Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of First 15 here on Past Teacher Skin. We're trying something a little bit different here. And while we're trying something a little bit different, we're going to try a little bit different with the game. This time we're playing Mad Max. So come check it out. It is known that the world fell, and that most people in it died. The dead will not suffer the hardships of a terrible world which remains. Those born into this hell have no remembrance of anything else. Those who survived, those are the truly broken, for they know what was before. One such man, one who had lost all, over and over, and to this, he had lost his sanity. His was a never-ending journey away from the phantoms of his past. He believed he could silence the cacophony in his mind and find peace beyond a place he called the Plains of Silence. He now had the vehicle, the weapons, the provisions and the fortitude. He only needed the fuel. And here, there was but one place to go for fuel. Gas tank. Of Arthur, you've hunted well. Here's the fox who thought he'd plunder from Scabra Scrotus. <laughs>
even if it meant another war. And war was coming because he had created a mortal enemy. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the actual gameplay of Mad Max. Now that was a epic introduction to the world of Mad Max. If you haven't, if you don't know it already, and you haven't seen the four movies, and you haven't seen Fury Road, it's, this is a dark, post-apocalyptic, survival-driven, dog-eat-dog world of chaos, blood, and tears. And it is glorious. It is really well made. Avalanche did an amazing job of portraying this. It's a great game, but nowhere near perfect. That's the biggest flaw that Mad Max has, is that it's good, but it's not great. It does an amazing uh, portrayal of the world of Mad Max. It is big, it is dry it is depressing it uh, adds to the elements and the world and the creatures and the characters that exist in it a perfect example is our introduction to chum bucket here so to blaze by godly plug ignite revolution about revolution rejoice please don't kill chum bucket please hey <laughs> why shouldn't i because I know you. Yeah, I spied you in the long lookers. They left you for the blowflies, and they snatched your ride. And now you'll be looking to snatch it back. That's what the prophecy says. You're the driver. Yeah. That's right. Then Chumbucket is your man. Yeah, I'm your man. Yeah, yes, I am. See, I have a vehicle that can take you to your car. I do say. That's right. She's not running now. Sorry for that. I came here for the part. Easy. I'm a black finger. I can make it work again. And I, I think you did too. It's gonna need an overhaul. Don't go stray. No, I won't. I know you'll find me and dismantle me. I know. Chum Bucket the Blackfinger becomes our mechanic and our uh, upgrade path for our vehicles and tools and equipment throughout the rest of the game. He said. Uh, He's an interesting character, obviously a, a, a vehicle, religious, mechanical zealot of some sort. Dogs, please. But he is here to help. I can fix it, but I do my best work in my sanctum. Push the car. I need wire to fix my buggy, but then I can show you where they took the black on black. Where do I find wire? Up that path. But before you go, grab some grit, Saint. You must be running on fumes. The healing and supply system where you actually gather water or you eat food out of tin cans or sitting nearby becomes a little bit frustrating, uh, but it fits in so well with the scavenging world that you live in. It means that you do become very aware of your health levels and uh, the, the, the water itself is actually a, a, a seriously important supply that you try to uh, unlock in any of the strongholds you get later on. But as you go into this section of the game very early on, you're just getting introduced to the combat. Now, <laughs> I obviously don't look like I know what I'm doing, but I got a lot better over time. So nice to throw that guy off the cliff. The combat feels like it's got the same rhythm and flow and counter abilities of the Arkham series. But obviously because this isn't made by the same company, but it's published by Warner Brothers, it doesn't have the same comfort of mechanics, is the way I suppose to describe it. It doesn't seem to actually have the tightness that the Arkham series does have. But in trade-off, what it does gain is the visceralness of it. Hey, like, you see Batman leaping across rooms and pummeling guys with knee strikes and elbows to the jaw. And you just see them ragdoll and fall. But wow, in Mad Max, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more grotesque. Like, I mean, whenever you just wind up and just nail one of those punches, 
it just feels like you've just rattled that guy's jaw near enough tearing it clean off and whenever you do hit that final blow where it slows them down and they drop to the floor you will see people ragdoll and crumple into some grotesque shapes as they fall against the objects in the world Sounds of a smackdown. So you're not a Lucian, are you? Tell me you're not. Huh? Praise me! Praise me! <laughs> Your little dinky D canine pal becomes more important later on. It Generally, at this point, he's just actually making sure he gets home safe and be recovered. But he does end up actually becoming the scout to try and find landmines and stuff from your vehicle at a later time. Every guy needs a companion, and this companion's got four legs. And I'm not talking about Chum Bucket whenever he's running around skittling on the roof. Rev it up and go, Sink. The buggy's humble, but she can haul. Sooner I get my car back, the sooner I'll be on my way. Oh, amen! Huh? Ooh, over here! Huh? Over! Come look! You yeah, see, this is where the thick brow squat and cut. Butchers. Being for the nose. Oh, no. oh, yeah, look. There. Scabber of Scotus is the king. Yeah. He's a big boss man from the gas town, you see. Scrotus always keeps the best parts for himself. So. Yeah, but he's not here now. You see, I, I don't see the land over. And... I'm getting my car back. Please, 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 please. An idea. It's better for you, and it's better for me. Just listen. Look, here, here, black on black is toast. It's scrap. It's gone. She'll never be whole again. Huh? Now I, I can build you a car. Bring into creation one that's faster and tougher than the black on black ever was. Yeah? How tough, how fast? Uh, very. Faster than fear. Tougher than an iguana's gonads. Mm. Come, come, come with me. We mustn't be seen. Huh? I'll take you to the tabernacle, and when you see what I'm gonna show you, oh, you'll be shouting holy all day long. Now, from this vantage point, you can see a fair bit. But this is just, like, the bare minimal of the world that you can see from a hillside. I mean, whenever I first started playing it, seeing that big ship as a space to go and take a wander over, I thought, right, that'll be a boundary that we don't pass. But literally, in the next chapter of the game, this is the boundary of where you start from because you can't come back over here for a while with the amount of trouble you've caused. It's... The world is big. There's bigger worlds in games, obviously. But it's just... What is this place? It's a desolate wasteland along the, a lot of the way, which gives us a really oppressive atmosphere that makes the game feel... Uh, so right for the Mad Max world. Our introduction to... Chum Bucket's magnum opus, the great car that we'll be modifying non-stop throughout the rest of the game and actually kind of adding bits and pieces to in from the hideout or from wherever we're actually working on it. It becomes the new Interceptor, the most important car. The uh, one that has all the tools, tricks and everything we need to take down all of our opponents and really is a war horse. You, you can steal buggies and vehicles from other clans and hide them out in strongholds, but this is the one that has your harpoon gun, your uh, sniper rifle, your spite wheels, your nitros boosts. It has everything and anything. 
and it all starts off with the most boring, simple, tiny little shell of a car. This ain't no car. It's just a mess of parts. No, no, no. She's knowledge from the numinous. Divinely inspired. She wills herself upon this world. Look! See? Here. Divine meets drive shaft and a symbiosis of faith. Modded and made to measure. You want some of that old time religion, huh? I got a classic whammy turbo high dog. Huh? Hell yeah! Bulletproof and torture tested. Statically upgraded with chum bucket overdrive. Coils, springs, shocks, and links too. It's gonna be eight cylinders, nothing less. Yes, well, we will get there. Yes. First, we have to get her beautiful body. Show me where it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Come. No time like the present. Come on, see. We must go. It would be an error not to mention the capture mode that's built into the game. It's designed to allow you to get stills and video clips and to essentially have a directorial kind of control over how the Mad Max world looks whenever you're putting video together. I have used none of it at all whenever I've been putting together this video clip because it has it would be a really a nice elaborate fun thing to do but it doesn't really relate into the reviews. You have a lot of camera control and it can all be shared to the second player who uses it as their um, way of interacting with the game. Exaltation, she's cracked open. We must hurry. Wardens of this place, murder on sight. The action really comes into its own whenever you get into the set pieces, the, the, the key events of the story missions, whenever you're being chased by large gangs of enemies and you're having to work your way through a dangerous terrain where you're being attacked from all sides by explosives and fireballs and anything else. The, it makes it feel much more like a Mad Max game than the hand-to-hand the -hand combat or the gunplay does or the scavenging or the building of bases, the, this is what makes it feel so Mad Max. It just makes a bang for every single moment, but these are few and far between. They're not as many as you wish them to be. So I don't say this is a perfect game, but there's a lot of great moments in it. I want to say thank you very much for watching. This has been a decent review of Mad Max. I love you. You guys love me. And we're going to do this again week in, week out. So remember to come back to the channel anytime because this is Past Caesar Skin and we bring the explosions. Bye!